Mr. Bosworth now has uh, two twin nephews who are acting exactly the way Brian did when he was a kid, and they're, and they're sort of wreaking havoc in your own life, right? Yeah, they are. They, they poisoned my dog last night. <laughs> and now I'm got to go home and make sure my dog dog's okay, okay now. Sure she's fine. Raiders should be okay. And uh, they think that their uncle kills people for a living. <laughs> it scares me, man. It's... What was it that your mother once said about you? That uh, it's it's a good thing that Brian. Uh, if I if I was the first, I'd been the only. Yeah. Which I can I I sympathize with my parents because I know I put them through some serious times. Yeah. One of the quotes that uh, we had from you once upon a time is, "I hope I always do what bothers people." <laughs> that was again probably when I was 20 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and I just probably enjoyed uh, uh, doing things that graded on people because they just get stuck in that rough, rough rut of life, and they, they don't. Uh, if if things don't go the same way all the time, and all of a sudden there's a door, and they hit that door, it's like, oh man, I don't want to get involved with this. Speaking of doors, did you actually put that nut in the the assembly line well, at this? You know, I never I never admitted that. I just see, saw Rick, all these things happening. See, Rick Riley made it made it made it look like you put a nut in a car, building the, the nut, chassis oh, of the yeah. car, so that there's a a rattle in a car, so that... You know, Rick's a sensationalized writer. And he <laughs> loves it. And had a best-selling book on the New York Times list. Okay. Uh, you and the Seahawks, you played very briefly, less than three seasons, but we have some video of you, and including the most famous of all plays, uh, the Bo <laughs> Jackson play, but there you are on the sidelines there. Um, in the very brief career that, that you had, were you pleased with when you were healthy, how you played? Uh, toward the end of my first year, as I started to catch on to the system, and was... Such a different system than, uh, you know, going from college to the pros because the uh, the amount of things that you have to learn. Now here's the famous play with Bo. It's, it's not that big a deal. I mean, he, Jim Brown has carried people into the end zone, but they had you being. If I was on the 50 yard line, it'd be second and eight. <laughs> it's on the goal line, and it's such a, it's a touchdown. Now people have made this out to be like you were you were exploded I, I into the end zone. I'm st I haven't landed. I'm still on my back somewhere in, in orbit somewhere. <laughs> uh, Bo is a great athlete. I mean, I've always said that I've been been uh, mesmerized by what Bo has been able to do. But uh, this play, for some reason, just gets more plays, and I mean, it's going to go down in history. It'll be the only play football if it, if it gets, gets into one of those satellites and sent out to orbit for, for another world to see what we that's do right. here on this planet. That's the play. They'll put go. it in a time capsule. That's right. Uh, by the way, you have said for the record, you, one of your great regrets is that you didn't get out of football sooner. You didn't want to play hurt with the kind of pain that you endured. What advice would you give to Bo Jackson now? Well, if I knew the extent of his injury, if it was anything like what I have, I would, you know, uh, I would go back and, as a matter of fact, I talked to Chris Spillman last year who had a problem during the middle of the year um, to, to evaluate his, not only his career, but evaluate his life. I think when you're, when you're a player, you start to lose sight of life after football, life after your sport, mm -hmm. and the price that you pay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I pay a price every day, and I will pay a price till the day I die for what I've, what I've done. But I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't go back and change a thing. As Brian Bosworth, how would you then talk about John Elway? Because once upon a time, you said of John Elway, he manipulated the NFL like I could so he could play where he wanted. Some people think of him as Mr. Glee Club. I think of him as Mr. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> now, does Brian Bosworth... With it, John. Does, is that different now, no, now no. that you're Brian Bosworth? See, I'm just having fun. Again, uh, when we played uh, Denver, it was our first game of my rookie year, and... They built this thing up to be the most sensationalized game, $11 million guy, uh, dollar guy against, I think he signed a $13 million deal or whatever. And, and um, I was just trying to make some excitement for the, for the, for the fans and everybody else involved. But uh, I just enjoyed playing with John because John was such a great guy to play against because he just got so frustrated. I could see in his eyes he just wanted to come across the line and strangle me. <laughs> it was just a lot of fun to play with. Brian Voss with our guest from Wrap It Up and Final Thoughts after this. Evident. You know, throughout his college career, I mean, you can tell by looking at somebody. It definitely enhanced his ability to play football. And I guess as we had, uh, you know, drug testing in the NFL, you could definitely tell the fall off with him. And I think his body, after a while, just more or less deconstructed uh, because of the fact that, you know, he was uh, using uh, anabolic steroids. Tony Casillas is talking about Brian Bosworth having used steroids. He's acknowledged having had a doctor's prescription for steroids. In our final minute, though, what would you say to kids who think that the way to become the boss or become the player the boss was is to use steroids? What would you say to them? I'd just go back to that same statement I said earlier about the player doesn't come from what you put in your body. The player's already in your body. It's your heart and how the size of your heart and how much devotion you put to that, 
to that sport. You know, I played the game for 20 years. I played it not during the season, but I played it during the off season. Nobody lifted weights any harder than I did. Nobody ran as much as I did. Nobody lived the game both night and day like I did. Nobody did, and nobody could ever tell me that they did. But if you're going to try to go to another avenue, where's the finish line? What's the point in doing all that? You know, look at the upside, look at the downside. Um, it's really scary nowadays. I, you know, I go into the gym now, especially down to goals, and I see all these guys. They're fixing to explode. You know, their veins are like, you know, this, they look like tubes. Mm. And uh, what's the point? I don't understand it. Um, it's a scary situation, and it's, I don't I, I really don't have an answer for you because there is not one guy who can stand up and say, okay, here's the answer, and this is going to solve the, the entire problem. Well, we could start with the, the old expression, to say no. Say no to steroids, yeah, too. Just, just say no. Yeah. Be smart. Yeah. We're out of time. Brian Vosser, we want to wish you the best of luck with this new film. So far, you don't look like you're going to need it. It looks like it's doing just very, very well. Thanks, Brian. Stone Cold is the name of the film. You can uh, check it out. It's at your local theaters, as they say. We'll come back, wrap things up up close after this. And Bosworth for joining us up close. Tomorrow, Ferguson Jenkins. He'll be inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame in July. It's a special show. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.